All right, guys. Let's see what we can do with these. These are the Dart 027s for David Visard. They have some sticky glue and stuff on them. I'm not ashamed to say that the the job I was originally given was just to copy DV's ports and send this out. Well, after I copied DV's ports and I had a long conversation with him, he let me do some modifications because there was a couple things that I just did not like at all. This head had zero swirl everywhere in the lift curve. DV goes, that's not good. It had horrendous dicum flow. It was literally... It was thinner than this pen, and it was one little strip right here, and that's it. That's all it had. In actuality, the valve DV sent me was a 2.25. You can see with that 2.25, it just makes it. I mean, it really just makes it. In fact, it's super difficult to get a decent valve job on it. I did have to hone the guides in order to make them even straight enough to to put a seat on it that I could I could check the run out. Uh, they should be good to go now. The valve job is completely usable the way it is. It is DV specific valve job. It is less than a 45 degree seat. I won't say anything else about that. DV didn't want me to show anything on this head whatsoever, but I never listen anyhow, so I figured I could show you some stuff, and I'll let him show all the really good stuff. Now, when I did my preliminary flows and stuff, I didn't have the right bore adapter. So, literally, what I'm going to show you is the difference in flow that DV posted versus what I'm getting now. Let's show you the bore. Okay. Okay. The bore is, let's measure it, because I don't want to give the wrong info. Okay, that's what the Felpro head gasket measures, okay? It does fit almost identical to my spacer that uh, Brian made up for me. Okay, now, if we take a look at our liquid, this is night and day of where we started. Any... Biffy's going out, obviously. All right, anywhere... How can I say this? I will state that I feel these will make more power with the liquid flow they have now than they did before. Between the improvements in liquid flow, the improvements in flow, the improvements in air speeds through the ports are radically different than where I started. This was not a small, low-hour job by any means. In fact, Wiffy has, is blowing a conniption fit. That's all right. I'm good with it. <laughs> it's a two-fold, it's a two-fold is, issue with Wiffy. No, no uh, good-paying jobs are coming in and no YouTube money. Not that YouTube really pays much, but, you know, every little bit helps. Okay, what, what can we say as far as, as this? I talked about the valve size. I do believe these will flow better with a little bit smaller valve. Take a look at how this actually overhangs here. Okay, the valve is actually too big for the seat that I can put on it at this point. But, take a look at, we do have some gunk on the plug, but I'll be honest, that uh, plug hasn't been cleaned in a few flows, so it probably isn't that gunky from one spray. Remember, this is also a finished flow. I add a little extra dicum to see what, what's going to happen. We are getting a lot of dicum right in this area before it was moved over and soaked the plug, which is kind of interesting because I talked to my friend Richard Catterjohn and uh, because he's the only person I know that's used these before. And what he said was, I'm sure he'll be okay with me talking about him. He's like, you got too much on that plug. 
move that swirl over to this side more. And that's what I tried to do. I don't know if I was completely successful because it looks like a lot more of it is right here. But I would rather have it spilling here on the chamber than completely soaking the plug. You can see we got some big drips on the exhaust valve. So she's coming, she's coming around this way and spinning. This I had to, I, I had to uh, go over and take a little bump out that I saw on camera. So this had some splatters on it as well. So we're getting, we're getting a nice circular liquid pattern. Uh, I believe I did this at 750 lift, which is what DV said he was going to use on this engine. As far as I'm concerned, it's not nearly enough lift. But it's DV's project. There is one thing on the board I want to show you. Take a look in reference to where this plug is, right? And what the liquid flow is doing now. That's going to be important. Okay, it's an approximation, right? Our plug is about here. See the way our liquid goes in front of that plug and then splatters around? I think that's going to work out really well. Please, if you guys know better than I do, talk about that in the comments. I think that's going to work very well. Now, that doesn't remember, I've never done a cylinder head even close to this. This is a small block head that flows better than those rectangular port 427, 435 horsepower heads did after they were ported. Okay? Important to, to notice. It's a, still a small block head. It's a 9 degree inline valve head. I don't... Supposedly, I, I took a look. They are still available. They're like three grand a piece. Ouch. I don't know if I would go for that exact design head. I think I would have to check out some SB2 stuff. I've never done any SB2 stuff, but I have a feeling the uh, changing the valve angles and so much is probably probably a good thing and uh, more of a canted angle. Okay, as far as our valve, we got a nice spread on our valve and we got some on the center of the cylinder. Let's turn on some extra lights. Okay, we are nice and wide in the bowl. We go right to the floor. We've got some on the center of the cylinder side. Is it perfect in every way like my wife? It's pretty close. All right, I did have to change the angle of the fin radically. It's much shorter than it was, and it is angled in such a way as to move that liquid flow over. Will it be a winner? We'll know after a dyno test. All right, doing what I can with what I've got. It looks like, it looks like it's, all right, it looks fairly good. I see a little darker color on, on the left side of the roof. That is probably due to using a little bit different burr than the rest of it was done. But in any case, the texture that I used, that's another, that's another thing, right? I did a video on the, on the textures. DV wanted these sand rolled. Well, when they were sand rolled, I could not get a good liquid spread, not even close. And this texture, which is the same texture I used for the manifold for DV's 743 horsepower 421 intake manifold. That engine had very good brake specifics, okay? And I do believe that the texture was part of that. And this texture makes this port lose about 3 CFM. I will lose 3 CFM in order to have better liquid coming through the bowl and out into the chamber. At the very bottom of that bowl on the right hand side, it looks like it has a dent, but I assure you it's not a dent. Okay. And as far as making my airspeeds through this port, 
as even as I can, it's at its limit. Now, the other the other problem with this <laughs> this project was they are two different style heads. One's a billet, one's a uh, cast. You would think the billet has way more metal, but it doesn't. It's way more restrictive because of the way they machined out for the water passages. So I had to be very careful that I could be repeatable from one head to the other. And that's the way they are right now. Uh, I will do probably, I will probably flow two ports on, on the billet head, two ports on the cast head, and I think that's going to be about it. And I am going to do one port with the IOP program. I will record that, but I don't think I'll publish that until uh, until DV gets these and figures it all out. As far as DV getting these, I will be driving these up along with all the Mission Impossible stuff, hopefully in a couple weeks. And uh, I got to talk to DV, but I'd like to invite uh, Rob to come with, with me. I think that would be a fun trip for both of us. Let's take a quick look at the short side, see if we can see any liquid flow around that. Okay, getting all the short sides the same. A little tough. I would have liked to have had a better lower cut. I mean, it looks like there's absolutely no lower cut on, on this right now. But there is. It's very difficult to see because our our seat is is very thin. And then there's a tiny lower cut. And then it radiuses in. As it, as it stands, Terry Walters said, don't go crazy with the valve job. I may go over it again. But in order to get my testing right, I had to put a good valve job on everything. And uh, so I did the best I could with what I have. Now, remember, it's also DV's less than 45 valve job. And the reason he wanted to do that is he wanted to build up the meat in the middle of the curve more. And uh, the shallower valve angle does do that. So we're good as far as that. Okay, flow sheet. Charlie, you're not showing us anything. Actually, I'm showing you a lot. But I'm keeping to the rules of the game that DV laid forward. He didn't want me to show you what the, the flows and stuff were. But if you wanted to do a little homework, you could find out exactly what they are. The blue flows on the left are DV's published flows. How did I do? Plus 4, 5, plus 10, plus 17, plus 29, plus 18, plus 9, plus 0.7, plus 0.1, minus 17. That is the only minus. Plus 4, plus 8.2, plus 11.3. Why is there an issue at that minus 17? It's a swirl issue. It go, it drops to zero at that point. That's the only point that's zero. The rest of it has a decent swirl curve, which I think is important to getting a nice, fast burn. Now, remember, this is going to be a full 54 small block that they're going to have to spin pretty hard. Okay? Take a look at some of our air speeds. Pinch is good. The pinch is... According to Richard Catajohn, you got to do a lot of work on the pinch on these, and I did. I appreciate his help. As far as the roof, it wants to put a lot of flow across the center of the cylinder side of the intake port. Now, you can make one head much, you can give it much more area on one head than the other head. Unfortunately, I wanted to make them equal, as equal as I could. So that limited what you could do with those air speeds. I could have worked probably a little more on the short side. But if you take a look at the speeds on the short side, they're relatively good. 287 versus 295 is relatively even across the short side. The string is nice and stable in that port at 750 lift. As far as our exhaust port, I'm not going to talk about the flows on the exhaust port. I didn't change the design radically on the exhaust port because it was quite good. But I did improve the air speeds through the exhaust port. Well, how can you do both, Charlie? Well, instead of radically changing the, the design, I just removed 
some aluminum in areas that I thought necessary to get the speeds closer. Okay, across the top, 329, 333, 344, not bad. Now, on the right side, that's the center, that's the center of the cylinder side of the exhaust port, okay? It definitely wants to push more air across that point. Now, you have to remember, you've got one valve right next to another valve with huge bowls. There's not a lot of metal there. You have to be very diligent. Now, that's a common wall because it's a, it's a cast head and it's a high performance head. But if you get too thin through that, it can cause issues. So we're not going to do that. As far as the center, 290, 292, 337. A little fast on, on the center of the, uh, the cylinder side. Best I could get. The bottom, 284, 233, 308. Not completely dead in the center, but not bad considering what it is. Now, that valve is a 1.6. It has DV-specific valve job on it. I think we're done. All right, guys, 16 minutes and change, talking about something I'm not allowed to talk about. Well, I don't think DV would be upset at me, to be honest. <sighs> These were, like I said, a huge challenge. I appreciate DV trusting me to do this. It was an insane amount of time. Because remember, I cannot ruin them. I cannot put holes in them. All right? I cannot sink the valve job and do what I want to do on them. No, it's got to be, it's got to be, if they want to, what they'll probably do is a skim coat on the deck. They may change the, the valve job. I don't know. I will probably, when I drop these off to at David's, I'm sure we will run through and test them on his bench. Uh, his bench and my bench really read almost identical. I have brought my calibration plates to his uh, his place and uh, and checked his bench. Now remember that was back before he had his dreadnought, so he only had his one SF three hundred at that point. But that was a it was a really nice bench. It was nice and quiet compared to my beast because it has less motors. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you putting up with me. And uh, please give me uh, give me some feedback on this project. Do I think it will do a thousand horsepower? It's a good question. Uh, like I said, it's beyond, I've never done anything like that before. Now, if we take a look, take a look at that seven hundred and forty three horsepower engine that uh, Terry and David did together. I did the intake. I know what those heads flowed. I don't know what intake they're going to use on this. I know there is a cast intake that exists for this with a single carburetor. I don't think that intake is going to do it. As far as I'm concerned, this needs a tunnel ram and dual dominators. Otherwise, you're going to knock that intake flow down too much. It really needs to flow better than that intake port. But according to the calculations, it's going to come close. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.